What I want to work on next is the logger. So you can see that on line 14 and on line 15, we're using the console. So these two lines that I highlighted and I don't want to use the console. I actually want to use my uh, log library that I imported. So if we go quickly into the package, uh, that JSON file, you can see that we brought in this uh, Pino and Pino Pretty libraries. So these two libraries, as you can see here, I'm gonna scroll up a little bit. So these two libraries, we brought them in and we haven't used them yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna open the file tree and I want to go to source again and then create another folder and I'm gonna call it util. Um, I think I can call it log and let's just go with util. You can call it log if you want or logging or something like that. And then inside of this util, we're gonna create another file. We're just gonna call it logger.js. So that's gonna be the logger file and enter. So if I expand this now, we have this logger.js and now we can work on this file. So the first thing of course is to import logger. So logger from, uh, let's say Pino. So Pino. So we import logger from Pino and then I'm going to create a constant that I'm going to call log. So constant log and then set it equal to logger and then we're going to configure the logger. So here I need to pass in an object which is going to contain the configuration. So an object and then open this on a new line. The first thing I want to do is to remove the process ID because whenever I'm logging stuff, I don't want to show the process ID. And to do this, you do base and then you open an object and then you pass in PID. So process ID, you're going to set this to false. So that's the first thing that I want to do. And then I want to pass in the transport configuration. So we're going to say transport and that's also another object. So open and close care the braces. And then in there, I want to set the target to be Pino pretty. So Pino dash pretty. So this is going to make the log a little bit prettier. And then I can pass in some other options. I'm going to say options. And this is also an object. So open and close curly braces. And then I want some color. So colorized. And we're going to set this to true. All right. Then I'm going to scroll down. And the next thing I want to do is to set the timestamp. So we're going to say timestamp. This is actually all lowercase and this takes a callback function. So I'm going to do a callback function here and then I'm going to do two back tick and inside of them, I'm going to put a comma and then a quotation and then I'm going to do time and then I'm going to close that quotation and then put a colon and then put another quotation and then a dollar sign open and close curly braces and then in that quotation and then in here, I'm just going to pass in the date. So I'm going to call the JavaScript new date. So new date call the constructor and then again we're going to set this to local string and then call the function so this is the configuration that we need to do for our log and i don't think we need this space here so i'm going to go ahead and uh, go over here and then remove that space and again you really didn't have to do all this configuration uh it would just work if you would just call it so you can just use it without this configuration. You just import it in whatever class you want or whatever file, and then you just use it like that. And the last thing we need to do is to export this. So I'm going to export default, and then we're going to export the log, which is the variable that we created here. All right. And then I'm going to save everything. Now I can use that instead of using the console log. So let's go inside of the index file. And then I want to go here. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to delete this log because I don't really need it. And I need to import. Oops. I need to import that logger. Let's go on line five and then import logger. And then we're going to import it from that for slash util for slash logger.js. Now we should be able to use it. So let's go on to line 15. And I want to go to the console. Instead of console, I'm just going to change this to logger. Oops. Logger. And then change this to info. And that should give us the same result. But this time it's going to look a little different. And you're going to see that whenever we check this out in the, in the console. So logger.info. And then we pass in the same message. And from now on, we're only going to use the logger. We're not going to use the console.log whenever we need to show some log on the console. So save all that. I'm going to open the terminal again and then run the dev environment. All right. So you can see now the log looks a little different. You see that it's blue. We have a timestamp. And then we have the type, which is info and then we get the, the, the message. All right, so this is all working. 
I'm gonna go ahead and uh, exit out of this. The next thing I wanna work on is to create our queries. So before we create our controller, where we're gonna be making requests to the backend and save the patient, update patient, etc. I don't wanna be writing all of the queries manually. So I wanna create a dedicated class or a dedicated file and then create an object and then pass in key value pairs inside of this object and then use those as my queries. And you're gonna see how this is gonna come together in a minute. So let's open our folder here and inside of the source again, I'm gonna create another folder and then I'm going to call it query. Okay, so this is going to contain all of the queries that we're going to use in the controller whenever we need to manipulate the data in the database. So query, and then inside of the query, we're going to create another file. I'm going to call it patient.query.js. Okay, so this is going to contain all of our queries and you can see the file is right here. So I'm going to open this file and close this panel. Now we're going to put all of the queries that we're going to use inside of this file. 